Ever wondered what makes your computer run? Let's start with the basics. The hardware or the physical components of a computer system includes the central processing unit or CPU, which is essentially the brain of the computer, processing all the instructions. Modern CPUs are multi-core, meaning they have multiple processing units in one. Then we have memory, which includes RAM, the computer's short-term memory, used for running applications and storage devices like hard drives and SSDs that store data long-term. Connecting all these components is the motherboard, the main circuit board that allows communication between the CPU, memory, and other peripherals. For interaction with the computer, we have input and output devices such as keyboards, mice, monitors, and printers. Now, what guides the hardware? That's the software, the set of instructions that tells the hardware what to do. Software can be broadly categorized into operating systems, which manage computer hardware and provide services for computer programs, application software, programs that perform specific tasks for users, like word processors, web browsers, and email clients, and utility software, programs that help manage, maintain, and control computer resources. So next time you turn on your computer, remember, it's a symphony of hardware and software working together. Ever stop to think how data travels from your device to the other side of the world? Computer networks make this possible. They are systems where two or more computers link together to share resources and information. Key components include routers and switches, devices that connect multiple devices on a network, and route data to its destination. Imagine routers and switches as the traffic directors of the digital highway, guiding data packets to their respective destinations. Then we have the transmission media, the physical paths for data transfer. These can be wired like Ethernet cables or wireless like Wi-Fi, acting like the roadways for our data traffic. The rules of the road, those are your network protocols. TCP IP for example is a set of rules that allows network devices to talk to each other, ensuring that data sent from one point reaches the intended destination without getting lost in the digital abyss. But what about long-distance communication? That's where telecommunications comes into play. It includes telephony, both traditional phone services and modern voice over internet protocol or VoIP, mobile networking like 4G and 5G, and satellite communications which are vital for remote areas. These technologies enable the transmission of information over significant distances, connecting us not just to our neighbors, but to the world. In the digital age, being connected is not a luxury, it's a necessity. Ever wondered where your save to the cloud data actually goes? Let's embark on a journey to the digital fortresses, known as data centers. These are dedicated spaces designed to house computer systems and related components, such as telecommunications and storage systems. Data centers are essentially the backbone of our digital world, ensuring the smooth operation of the internet, business applications, and yes, the cloud. At the heart of each data center, we find powerful computers called servers. These aren't your regular home computers. They're specialized machines designed to process data at impressive speeds, manage vast amounts of information, and provide resources and services to other computers. But it's not just about the servers. Storage systems play a pivotal role in data centers. They're like the vast libraries of the digital world, storing and organizing large amounts of data for easy access and retrieval. And of course there's networking. This is the intricate web of connections, both internal and external, that allows data centers to communicate with each other and the wider world. Without networking, a data center would be an isolated island in the digital ocean. Now let's talk about cloud computing. This is the delivery of computing services over the internet or as we like to call it, the cloud. It's like renting a piece of a data center's power and space without having to worry about the maintenance and running costs. There are three main types of cloud services. First, there's infrastructure as a service, or IALAS, which provides online access to computing resources. Then there's platform as a service, or PaaS, which offers an online platform for customers to develop, run, and manage applications. And lastly, software as a service, or SaaS, where software is available via a third party over the internet, eliminating the need for installations or storage on personal devices. The next time you save a file to the cloud, Picture the vast data centers working tirelessly to keep your data secure and accessible. So, we've taken a whirlwind tour of the ICT infrastructure. We've explored the hardware and software that form the backbone of our computer systems. We've dived into the interconnected world of networks and telecommunications, vital for sharing resources and information. 
and we've journeyed through the powerhouses of data storage and cloud computing, the heart of our digital world. Now, you have a better understanding of the invisible threads that keep our digital world spinning. Until next time, keep exploring.